Look at how good everything looks. These fans are running quiet, super quiet. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Gigabyte Aorus Water Force 2 360 Ice. Gigabyte did send me this AIO, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you want to find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging. Everything looks great. We can learn more about the product on the back side right here. If you're wondering about socket compatibility, this works with the latest and greatest from both Intel and AMD. Here's a look at the other side and we're back to the front. Now let's go ahead, let's open this up and see what's inside. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature walking us through each individual part and component with a nice breakout here of everything that's included. Then we have our Intel installation instructions here. Flipping it over to the back side, we then have our AMD installation instructions and our wiring diagram down at the bottom. Next, you'll see all the included parts and components here, multiple brackets. We have thermal paste, hardware kits with all the screws and bolts that we need for the brackets, as well as the fans, and then attaching this to our case. A couple different adapters here. We got our ARGB adapter here, splitter from one to two. And then this is gonna be for all of our fan cables. These fans are awesome. They have a quick connect feature where they can daisy chain off of each other. So let's look at the fans. They're all identical to each other. There's that system right there. Flip it around to the back side. Brushless. We got some specs 12 volt, 0.35 amps. Here's that connection system. The Aorus logo and branding. So pretty nifty fan. Again, all three are identical to each other. Let me show you how that system works really quickly. Basically, just line this up like so, and then you're going to slide them together. So these pins are gonna go connect right there. So attach and then just gently press. And now we have both fans connected and set up and we can add that third one as well too. So same thing, line up, just gently press in place to lock everything in. Now they're connected and daisy chained. If for some reason we want to remove them, just repeat that in reverse order right there. And then last but not least, we have the AIO. Let's look at this in more detail. So this is our 360 millimeter AIO. Everything's white, right? So look at the inside, that's painted white. We got room for the three included 120 millimeter fans. Great finish on it, everything looks great. Top notch build quality. Take a look at the pump housing here too. Aorus, team up, fight on. That's repeated right here as well. Aorus on the side. This can rotate too. So that's gonna be as far as it goes that way. And then here's the max the other way. So depending on our build, how we position this, we'll be able to rotate that to get it to line up exactly how we want. I really like that feedback. I like the clicky there. That's pretty sweet. Then we got our power and RGB there. And here's a look at the very bottom. Don't forget to peel off that sticker. Now let's go ahead, let's get this set up. So the cooler's been installed on our test bench. Everything is working great and it looks great. Want to point out really quick, I just took the easy way out by using the extra header on my board for the RGB, but they do have a splitter here so you could attach the pump RGB as well as your fan RGB to one header here and everything just splits right out. But take a look at that. Again, this rotates. So move it around to position it how you want, depending on how it is installed with your case. Fans right now running nice and quiet there and super smooth RGB. That's very bright. The lights are off, so you can really appreciate that brightness here on the RGB for both what's on the block as well as the three included fans. Spinning through nice transitions of multiple lighting effects speeds and all the different colors. Close up time here to see everything. Take a look there. Got our Intel bracket underneath as well as clipped on right here. And then we just fasten it in place. Take a look at the wires and cabling here. CPU fan, pump fan, and our RGB. Again, they provide you with the splitter here so you can connect both the pump and the fans together. Everything under one header, which is nice. I wanted to spend a minute showing you how this cable attaches again with the RGB and your fan power. And then everything else just quickly and seamlessly connects together. No more cables. So only these two cables to worry about as opposed to those and your fan cables. 
really clean. And now it's time for the close up on the other side here. Look at how good everything looks. These fans are running quiet, super quiet. Daisy chain together, no issues there. Very satisfying to watch, and the white looks so good. They did a nice job with the design, even just the subtle details on the fans, making it less boring and plain. Moving right along to our cooler's performance, we have it on the test bench with our 13900K. We'll be comparing this particular cooler to the overall average of all the other coolers that we've installed and tested on this particular test bench with our 13900K Intel CPU. That's gonna be a mix of both AIOs and your typical CPU air cooler. So first up, at idle, around 27 degrees Celsius for our cooler, compared to the average that's closer to 29 degrees Celsius. Next, at 65 watts, the average temp that we were able to record was, we'll just call it 33 degrees Celsius, compared to the average of 36 degrees Celsius. So starting off, we're seeing at the 65 watt throttle, whatever you want to call it, that everything is running a couple of degrees cooler. We start to see a little bit more separation as we move up to 95 watts, 37 degrees Celsius for our Aorus, compared to the average of around 42 degrees Celsius. And that separation continues as we move along at 120 watts. The average we're getting is right around 41 degrees Celsius compared to the average of around 48 degrees Celsius. Packing on more power at 170 watts, our cooler's coming in right at under 49 degrees Celsius compared to the average, which will round up to 57 degrees Celsius almost a 10 degree difference. And lastly, letting everything run wide open using Cinebench R23, our cooler keeps everything very reasonable at 81 degrees Celsius compared to the average of almost 94 degrees Celsius. A lot of times the 13900K will hit that 100 degrees Celsius threshold, but in this case, we're running about 20 degrees cooler than that and almost 15 degrees cooler than the average. Looking at that same Cinebench test, in case you're wondering, our CPU peaked at around 327 watts on average at that 81 degree Celsius mark compared to the average watts that we're seeing at around 328. So I'd say well within any sort of margin of error. And then max speed in gigahertz, very similar. 5.2 gigahertz maxed out at our Cinebench R23 test compared to the average of 5.1. Now enough with the temps, let's talk about noise performance. So everything's gonna be measured in decibels. The higher the value, the louder things will be. In this case, normalized with our studio environment here, with that computer turned off, mind you, and our GPU fan not running, the cooler comes in a little bit louder, about twice as loud technically than your typical cooler, 8.8 .8 compared to 4.4 decibels. Realistically, will you notice that? I would argue no, not at idle. You're not gonna hear the fans. You might just hear some noise from the pump housing. That's where we were able to pick up a little bit more than your typical AIO. But again, is it gonna be noticeable? The answer is no. And looking at our max noise level normalized to our studio environment, we peak at 30 decibels compared to the typical cooler. Again, this is both AIOs and air coolers at 27 decibels. So for most of you out there, yes, this will technically be three decibels louder at your AIO's loudest setting compared to the competition. But I would argue that is a very, very easy trade-off to make for the much, much, much better thermal performance you're getting with the temps of your CPU with this cooler versus your average cooler out there. So after putting this AIO through the ringer, it's really a no brainer that this is gonna be a fantastic cooling option for your CPU. You really can't go wrong. Sure, technically I know it's a little bit louder, but realistically, will you ever be able to tell? And I would say no, you wouldn't be able to notice a difference between this and your typical AIO, but you will notice a difference in your CPU's performance. And at the end of the day, that's exactly why you're buying something like this. So if it fits your budget and it matches the aesthetic and the build that you're trying to achieve, fits in your case, all of that good stuff, you really can't go wrong with this AIO.